Tuesday, Dan. Isn't what? it Tuesday? Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. It is another Tuesday. So Tuesday. That means, that, that means that? it's for, for another episode, isn't it? I think you're right. I think you're right. It's time for another episode. It's been, I can't believe the week has passed. It's crazy. I mean, the time is flying to the point where every time we say, okay, wrap one episode, Tuesday comes around, it's, it's just never ending. The barbecue never goes away. It's the year of the Rona. I mean, there, yeah, there's no, there's no rules. You know, it's the year of the Rona. I mean, if we can get through this, I'm not sure what month this is anymore. Who knows? <laughs> well, but we know it's Tuesday. Well, right? it, it is Tuesday. And I mean, with that said, it's always good to be back for another episode of the barbecue. And obviously, Mike Musto along with the obviously super Dan's owner. That's right. obviously the super <laughs> owner. Dan's owner. Um, I love the fact that there are times like we'll look at each other in the camera. Like, what's, do you remember my name? This what been a is this really today? Long, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I wake up? So here? It, <laughs> it's it seems like that. It just blurred. Um, but we've actually got a really really cool show today. We we got um a wick car that we we kind of, I don't know, actually know if it's classified as what a do you car? call it? I have no uh, idea. I don't know. It's a uh, I guess the way it, a nineteen eighty seven a Wosu Pulse Light Star. I don't even and it know. is what yeah. <laughs> It, it's like a, a motorcycle that's combined with the cockpit of an F-16. I'm not even sure um, what three words are strung together like, Mike. I, what is this? Oh, there it is. Look at that thing. Yeah. So we're, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But then we also have a very cool guest by the name of Johnny Smith. Who, if you are into kind of European stuff, you might know John from Fifth Gear. Um, he has a new show um, called The Late Break Show on YouTube. Johnny's been in motor journalism for forever. He's been a presenter on television, podcasting, radio. Nice guy, super knowledgeable. Driving around the UK in a big old Dodge Charger. Um, That's awesome. Just I a just, good guy. He's he's got that English accent that I just like listening to. I don't know Makes everything sound better. It does. It does. Yeah. You know, That's everything true. sounds better. So Johnny's going to be here in a few. But before we get to Johnny, let's talk about this thing. How did you let's talk about this, this thing, Mike? I, so every well, a lot of times when we have a guest. On if, if they're somewhat eclectic, right? Or eccentric. we, I try to find something. Or tries to find something that fits their personality. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know, Johnny has this little electric call, car that he called the Flux Capacitor, and for a long time, and it still might have the record as the the world's fastest EV in the quarter mile electric vehicle in the quarter mile. Wow. So I was like, what would Johnny drive if he had the <laughs> chance? And then it's this, I saw you came up with this. I saw the Pulse Light Star. My on God, Mike and Hemmings classifieds, and I go, that's it. And I right? thought friends. Like, oh, yeah. dude, <laughs> what do you do? You know, if those that aren't my podcast on YouTube, yeah. it literally looks like I took the cockpit team and put little wheels on wheels it. on it. Like it's obviously a little drivetrain, but it has these kind of out. Yeah, like, for better phrase, wings, right? With little wheels on them, and yeah. and for, and for watching this, imagine like like said 16 for jet cock little wheel it's it's like it's like the emotive version of what i aspire to uh in my later years which really a jump brown potato with two <laughs> sticking out from underneath that's what i'm tired to and i have electric vehicle <laughs> turn into <laughs> yeah it's like the, it's got a canopy from an it's yeah. I have the cockpit it's, it's a rolling cockpit. wheels under <laughs> i so you know, so I, I, mean, I could it. drive it. Yeah. You I don't would. know if somebody out there who's listening, if any, any idea what the Woso Pulse Light Star is, or if you have any information on it, please do us a favor and like shoot us an email at the website yeah. at com or comment in the comment section because I'm so intrigued by this goofy looking thing that was yeah. built, you know, 35 years ago. Um, I and tell I just us, want to know how it works. And tell us if we're even saying that name right. Is it a Woso? Is it a Woso? So, like, I'm not even sure where that comes from. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, but it's we're, yeah, firing cool. mine. Yeah, we want. I mean, it's it's got it's got all the Navy garb on it. It's got the you know or the Air Force star on it. It has a big wing. On I would it. I, I mean, would I would wear a helmet that said Maverick across the front of it, right? And, oh, you would have to, right? And 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 maybe actually buy I don't know maybe buy a a, a used Yamaha uh, motorcycle too. I'm at it. Okay, so if out there has any information on this Owoso Pulse Light Star, please shoot us an email, you know, either on, a comment on the on our YouTube channel or on the website. And we want to be schooled. Yeah. School we want to be schooled on yeah. this thing. 
Yeah. Um, but please give us give us a couple of seconds, and we'll be right back with our UK star, Mr. Johnny Smith. So, right back in a few seconds. Nice. So, everybody, and we are back with Johnny Smith. Now, for those who don't know Johnny Smith, you really should because he's been doing not only journalism and TV, and basically he's an international automotive superstar. Is that – would that be would that be correct? That's – right? like that, that, I mean, right? that's – it's good of you. It's that's good of you to say to. that. <laughs> I – yeah, I feel like you've maybe over overdone it. You know, you're, you're saying I'm 500 horsepower when the dyno the sheet came, came in and it's probably, probably a 300. 300. But you know, thank you. <laughs> Listen, on the on the hot rod barbecue, our goal is to make our guests feel so comfortable. That's right. That they tell everybody and that they want to keep them back on the show. Yeah, that's right. And we like to bench race. Well, you know, so, so you know, 500 horse. What's what's 200? horsepower between friends you know, <laughs> you know it, it's fine <laughs> right have we have we ever that's good i think this might be a barometer that you just you just threw out there john and have we ever had any 200 horsepower guests have we ever I, had any 150 horsepower guests no i mean other than me i don't think that we've had anyone under you know 100 bucks 75 200 you know at the very at bare, bare minimum that's our threshold we go okay. from 200 horsepower up and that's really that's <laughs> that's just a tercel with the air conditioning on so you know like <laughs> <laughs> right right so i'm i'm 200 horsepower with the smog gear on but i'm about to take it off so it's definitely more than 200 definitely i like that so just to give everybody a little background right so johnny i've been watching i've been a fan of johnny's for years watched him on fifth gear mud sweat and gear um you know he owns the is it is your little electric Still the, the world's fastest electric car? Quarter. It's a good it's a good question. I'm keeping an eye on the Ford Cobra Jet um, EV, and I'm keeping an eye on some of the, the hot Tesla Model S's. I think that it's still the classed as the quickest street legal EV, and that was 2016. So that's a, a, nine, a 9.86 second quarter mile, and that's on street tyres and, you know, full street trim, as, as you'd call it. Um, and I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think people are really close. I think if it hasn't been beaten, then it it it's about to most probably. But I'm 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 I've been milking it for four years, so I'm okay with that. Yeah. Wait, is this in <laughs> kilometers or miles? I mean, what what are we talking about as far as you know distance covered? Maybe it's a whole different animal now. I don't know. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, that's over the quarter mile. The quarter mile, right? Okay. Quarter mile, and then um, what was it? One hundred and thirty miles. So it's not massively quick. Um, uh, top, top end, end. but, but that's uh, a, it's all about the bo- bottom end. It's all about the next mile, really. Yeah, um, that's that's a fast, quiet quarter mile. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite quick. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I suppose so an EV development uh, four years is forty years. Yeah, it is like so, dog years for it's like dog years. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, Johnny, how did you? How did you tell her? How did you get into this? How did you get into the world of automobiles and presenting? Give people an idea of the backstory. I think I I I got it. I got into cars um, through the some of the cliche things like watching certain shows on television about I don't know Dukes of Hazard that sort of thing. I'm a kid of the '80s, so I remember being really excited about Dukes of Hazard and A Team and all the stunts and you know, the full guy and all of those things. Uh, yeah, so you've got all of those. And, of course, all the American films which had high action. I mean, I remember watching Blues Brothers and Smoking the Bandit, thinking it was just hilarious. And um, So there's a, the combination of that and the fact that I, I didn't grow up in a, like a car enthusiast household. I grew, I grew up in a household where my dad and my mum and dad just owned older cars. And so it was normal to... T- regularly tinker with the car you know the car was on the drive a lot on axle stands and things needed to get done on it and we used to go to scrap yards quite a lot to get bits because the internet didn't exist so and I just thought that was normal <laughs> and uh, yeah I mean uh, we went that well uh, apparently it's not uh, or it wasn't and um yeah so we used to always be the ones that would turn up uh, to school in the oldest car 
Uh, but I didn't I, I didn't have a problem with that. So um, I think I, I think that planted a seed at an early age. And then going into school and everything, I realised my skills were probably better at English and writing and art rather than science and maths. So that that started steering me down a road. And, and I always enjoyed, you know, adver advertising. I used to say I wanted to work in the world of advertising or something, you know, something visual. And then and then when I was at um, college, I remember that the, there was a course called multimedia computing, which sounds awful, not like media studies, because there was this thing called the Internet coming. And um, apparently it was going to apparently it was going to be quite influential and change things. So we uh, I remember I mean, it is funny when you I mean, I'm not that old, but it, I remember it being like that. And then I and then I went to university doing a similar thing, studying about media and about I loved magazines. I always read car magazines of all types, loved car magazines, really lived and breathed through them. And then just desperately wanted to get my foot in the door doing some journalism on cars. So just badgered people, really just kept badgering people, writing to people, trying to get some work published. And ultimately, over the course during my university degree, I got my foot in the door and got some work published and I got offered a, you know, a staff, a junior staff job and um, and pretty much just finished. I just ran away from university without finishing it. And uh, and and then that was it. And I. And then just worked my way up through the ranks of a couple of different magazines. The first one was like a niche magazine, or just an air cool VW, classic VW, custom VW magazine. And then going into more mainstream cars. And then as time went on, uh, I, I kind of the hobby was more old cars and the business was more um, modern cars and future tech of cars. And then, and then t TV came along by total accident uh, and... Like how do you how do you all sudden because I well I remember like there was TG that was on and over here that's what we got and then all of a sudden we we started to see the show Fifth Gear popping up and it was like what is yeah. this because it was such a cool alternative to the other show that it was it was a lot of fun you had a great cast with Vicky you and and uh, and Tiff and the content that you put out was great so like what what was it like how did did you have to audition for that or how did that come about well it was weird I mean I. I um I'm a, a friend of mine Tom Ford who was a a journalist uh, on a magazine I worked on and he got a job as a, a presenter on the show and one day he said oh you should um you should meet up with the the production team they're looking for new presenters they're looking for people that have like a left field view on cars and things I said well maybe and I bumped into him filming with the producer of the show at the Geneva Motor Show and just had a chat with them. And then a, a week or so later, they said, um, he said, oh, the uh, exec producer really liked you. He said, he, he um, could he get your details and go over and have lunch with him and have a chat? I said, oh, well, yeah, okay, I've got nothing to lose. So I remember driving over to have a chat, as he put it, and have lunch with him. And I, and I got there and he and I phoned him because I wasn't sure where the office was. And he said, oh, I'll meet you. I'll meet you out in the car park. So he ran out to the car park with a video camera. And he just basically ran towards me with the video camera and said, right, um, could you just talk about the car you've turned up in for 10 minutes? Go. And I thought, well, hang on. I've turned up for a free lunch. Right. So um, we did. Wait, Johnny, I did wait, Johnny, Johnny, let me interrupt. Did you show up in your parents' car that they had been working on it for the past 40 years is that what you I showed wish up? i had oh. you know it's, it's 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 a shame it's a shame because no that car had 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 left our family finally in 1999 and and i and i had this interview in 2006 so sadly the hillman avenger a, aka the plymouth cricket in your neck of the woods um, a very unsuccessful Mopar um, was uh, was, but but my little that was my little window into the world of old cars. That that had long gone. I think I think it. My dad had traded it in for pretty much 
a car of the same era and um it's my dad my, yeah my dad's almost like our mission is sort of car uh age is sort of it, when everyone is driving 2000s cars he's driving 80s cars and when everyone was driving 90s cars he was driving 70s cars i don't really know he's always a couple of decades behind so um i i I turned up, luckily, I turned up in a car that I knew something about because I was working on a magazine called Car at the time and we had a brand new Golf GTI in for a long-term test car and it was when the Mark V GTI came out, which was a really good GTI and it was a white one with the tartan inside and it had the sort of Ninja Death Star alloys and I actually was pretty pretty taken by it and I'd, I'd driven it for a few days previous to that so I, I could wax lyrical luckily about that car without really thinking about it too much I, I would have been doomed if I'd turned up in something I'd just got the keys to that morning and hadn't researched but luckily the stars were aligned so anyway I did this chat and I did think we had lunch and then um we I heard nothing from him for about two weeks three weeks uh, so I thought, oh, well, you know, obviously thought I was a bit shit and he's just being polite and he's just going to say nothing. And then um, about, yeah, about f- a month went by and he, I got an email saying we we cut together a showreel out of what you just did and showed it to Channel 5, who were the, was the channel which Fifth Gear was on originally. And um, they really liked it and they said they'll book you for one job, one episode, and and, and if you do okay, they might book you for another one. So that was the extent of the commitment on their part. And uh, which was nice. I kind of, I mean, I was excited. The, the the slight irony was that the the day or the week, I think, I got that call. Um, I got made redundant from the magazine I was working on. So on the one hand, I kind of had some bad news in that I'd lost my job, and in the other, the phone rang, and it was that whole thing of a one door closed, another door opened, and and I'd kind of made my decision to go. Uh, self-employed and go freelance I had a few contacts and I thought now's a good time and um and that was it and that was the start of my tv journey I'd done one thing for tv prior to that I was just a talking head on a a sky one big uh like long-winded list show documentary about the world's greatest cars and car chases and I was just one talking head out of dozens. And I, I think I remember getting quite a lot of airtime on that because I was just, I think I was just being a bit of an idiot. And I think people thought it, some of the stuff I said was quite funny. Looking back, it's quite embarrassing. But I was, I was only 20, 24 or something. So, hey, but, but um, yeah. And then that was, that was series 10 of Fifth Gear that I started. And, and Fifth Gear's in its 29th series now. So it's it's a weird one because it kind of, the, the show is a simple show and it's just a very, quite a low budget car magazine show. It's not glamorous, but it's it just cracks on with the job, really. It's just, you know, it's nothing, um, yeah, it's not glamorous. But I have to say, it's been it's been good to me, and it's um it's been good to work with some of the people that I grew up watching on TV. Um, some of the sort of older guard, like in fact Tiff Nadell, he it's his birthday today. It is um and the day we re- yeah yeah he's sixty nine today. What a great, wow, is he great really sixty nine? He is sixty nine. And the and the the race number on his Formula Four that he's had like since time began yeah. is sixty nine. So he finally. Is, uh, oh, yeah. finally he lines up, right? Yeah. You know what? Good for he him. Winds he winds up looks great. He's t- considering he refuses right? to eat vegetables. And, <laughs> and I, I've never, I don't know how that I don't know what that guy does, but his heart should be broken. He should be <laughs> clinically obese. But whatever, whatever. He just he's got it. He's just he's got a high metabolism. I, every time I want to shoot with him, all he wants is Either espresso, really sugary espresso, or Red Bull, and like sweets, or, like terrible sweets, like Haribo and stuff, like gum nice. Nice. Yeah, and then when we have lunch. He just wants a steak and fries. He doesn't want any kind of vegetables. He gets offended if we talk about vegetables, and he might push have a banana, like at some point in the morning <laughs> for breakfast. And, wow. but, but yeah, he's in, he's in better shape than all of us. It's ridiculous. I mean, those are life goals to aspire. To. I mean, I think I'm on that plan. I just you didn't realize I was on that his plan. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's the it's the retired racing driver Nadell plan. Yeah, it's right. easy. Nadell All plan. you've got to do 
They're the yeah. Atkins. Yeah. Right. I like that. And, yeah. So and he's 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 one of those people. He he's as good as I thought he would be, and he's actually turned into a really close friend. He's a good, he's the only person I've said this story loads of times, but it still creeps me up. He's the only person I know who tried to do a PB every time he mows his own lawn, and he he has rolled his own lawn tractor mower, um, trying to mow a bank around his garden too fast, <laughs> and he and he held onto the steering wheel and didn't eject from it. He stayed on it, tried to keep with it, <laughs> and to this day the steering wheel is crooked because of him rolling that that lawn mower. He said it. He said, "I didn't jump off it. But I thought I was going to get killed by the blade." So Same he, commitment. And he's yeah. So he's rolled a lawnmower. God. I mean, like how much commitment of a, like that? How much of a commitment to the PB? And he said, "Johnny, it's all about the PB. It's all about the PB. What do you mean? What do you mean with PB?" I said, "I mow the lawn and try and relax." Yes, not relaxing. Try to get it under forty minutes. Always trying to get it under forty minutes. <laughs> and that's next. Just, that's next level. If you're actually rolling a running lawnmower. Just yeah. think about that for a second. That's insane. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's great. He's, and he's, I tell you what, he's a, he's an animal comes to a night out. He's, he can drink me I've actually under heard the that table. About him. Uh, I've, I've actually heard that about Tiff. Like, when he goes out, he goes out hard. He goes, he goes out incredibly hard. And, and, and the, the, and what's quite annoying is he's such a pro because, like, if he's doing a job the next morning, he is up and out at, and ready at 6.30 for cameras rolling with a smart shirt on and a smile, and whereas the rest of us are completely broken. And he just can't... And he's the one that's had a, another bottle of gin on top of whatever we drank. So we've got no excuse. He is proper old-school racing driver stamina. Right. So, so Johnny, I think, I, I, think what, I think the lesson here that you're trying to impart on us is that he who mows hard goes out hard is that right. sort of like, <laughs> is that what the message is because i'm that's is, what i'm kind of taking from this fo. okay all right i like that he's he's a mofo he's an absolute <laughs> mofo i he's he's uh i think my take home is i'm trying to like eat vegetables and yeah. be healthy yeah, yeah. That, that's isn't working no, not no working. Really. it's just yeah. not working <laughs> so dude how did you so and did actually, you... you should have him on here you should have me on i would love to get to you, on. you should have him on well, I yeah. don't know Tiff. So, like, I'm talking about people that I know and that I... I would love to get Tiff because I've been a fan of him just like I've been a fan of yours for years. So it would be, be wonderful. I mean, I was funny. I remember his review, and I think it was on Fifth Gear years ago, of the E39 M5. And I oh, saw yeah. him out in that thing, and all of a sudden he came through full lock sideways in the rain in a full <laughs> drift. And I was like, all right, that's amazing. And I literally went out what an E39 M5. Nice. Did you really? I 100%. Uh, 100 it was it was, it was that and it was the guy Richie. Remember when BMW did all those kind of films that they made back yeah, in the day? BMW films, yeah. BMW films and yes. uh, so they did Guy Richie did one with Madonna who he was Remember at that. the time yeah. and um, That's right. And that like, was who was breakout? The, that's right. And who was there was an uh Clive Owen was the driver. Clive Clive uh, I do remember that. Yeah, but they were like little kind of 12 minute feature films. Yeah. yeah. They? Yep. But way to bust out the late 90s, Mike. Dude, you know, this is where, oh, I, this wow. where I came from. So, <laughs> you know, it's as soon as I saw that, I was like, I'm, I'm totally buying one of these cars. And I did. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, you know, yeah. That was that. That's, that's, BMW, that's a high point in the world of M5s. That is. Oh, it was the best M5 is as far as I consider That and I would do yeah. that. And I've always lusted after E28 M5. I just, I just, I just haven't found yeah. the right one yet. But if I found a super clean one, I, I would probably be inclined to, uh, to purchase it. Oh, well, Mike! In so, the meantime, while is... you're looking for one of those, all you need to really do, apparently, according according to Johnny, uh, just basically soak a banana in in a bottle of gin, go out all night, <laughs> <laughs> and you're pretty much on your way to whatever M5 variant you want. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, I it's think coming. It's oh, that's. Yeah. Uh, and you just turn up on a shoot. You got your super thin Hugo Boss leather jacket on, even when it's like driving rain and it's freezing. And he just turns up in like the thinnest jacket. You're like Tiff, you're going to get hypothermia. And then, um, and he just goes, "No problem." He goes, "Don't worry about me. I've got the heated seat on." Right? Where do you want the car? And he'll just 
He'll do exactly. He he'll just get in the car, having never driven whatever car it is. I've been with him in it, and we just go. He just goes like, "What? Where do? You, how close do you want it? How sideways do you want it?" And the, the you know the director will go, "Well, quite you know quite Larry, come in tight on the apex. No problem. Leave it with me." And he just comes in. I don't know. He's driven a Lamborghini. I did. He did it with a Lamborghini. Oh, what was it? It had just come out. It might have been the Merchilago. And just came in hot, 120 miles an hour, completely crossed up, having never driven a Merchilago in his life. And he just did it right, you know, three feet from the camera and just did it again and then did it. It probably did it five times and went, right, I think I can probably go a bit hotter if you want. More smoke. Do you want more smoke? And it's like, look, this is amazing. I'm just, I'm just going to go home and kill myself. Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so let me ask you. So now with the, the cars that you have right now, I, I want to talk to you, obviously, because we, we should kindred with, with the 60 charger, right? Absolutely. You have a, you yeah. have a 68 charger in the UK. So yeah, yeah, I want to talk about that. And then we want to get on and talk about your, your channel and, and all the other stuff that you're doing right now. But so how did that come about? And what is it like piloting a 60 charger around in the UK? People must be like, what? Holy crap, is that thing doing here? Yeah, on roads that were never built for a 60 charger, right? No. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's... Uh... It, there's a there's a lot of escapism with a with any old car, isn't there? Because you're driving something from a bygone era. But when you take a, an American car and you bring it to the UK, you've got the you've got the whole left hand drive thing versus right hand drive. I live in a quite a quite a quiet kind of a village and town with narrow old fashioned roads. So it's a it's a we yeah. Exactly. All of the roads, in fact, behind around by my house have got tight hedgerows and stuff. So it's 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 not it's not fit for purpose in that respect. But that's what I like about it. It's such an alien and people just stare and they love it because it it they, they know they know what it is because they've watched it in whatever films you want to name. But it's yeah, I mean, petrol, the cost of petrol is high, I think. Yeah, I think the cost of petrol. Well, over here, we're paying one. Oh, I'm trying to think in in, in one pound twenty a litre. So that's oh, about wow. five pounds a gallon. Our gallon is four and a half litres. Okay. Yeah. So, so ten bucks, like nine. Bucks. Yeah. Last time I checked, it's about three times what you Ooh. pay, something oh, wow. like that. So that I, yeah. So yeah. every time you rim your car, you think, well, we're paying triple that. Um, yeah so that's why a lot of people in the uk don't drive big displacement cars on a daily basis but but then again you have your you have your you have or there's lots of, we're an island of of obsessive car people really we, there's a lot of interesting cars about and actually there's quite a good american muscle community and i said this to you before mike i mean when i bought that car the the dodge I'd owned a couple of American cars previous to that, but they were mostly kind of um, a bit scrap, bit scrappy, and not particularly exotic, really. But um, and I was always working up to the sort of the 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 uh, I don't know the Halo vehicles, which was a a, a sixty eight, a sixty nine, seventy. I was actually looking at sixty sixes and sixty seven chargers as well, but um, I think I just I just desperately wanted one. I desperately wanted one, and I ended up buying it in the year that Bullet turned forty. So what was that? Two thousand and eight. So Bullet was sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand and eight. So two thousand and eight. I got two things happen. The do I bought the Dodge, and I got married, and I ended up having some of my honeymoon in San Francisco. Nice. Which is, wow. which is weird because the car got originally my car came from San Francisco, it seemed, and okay. then ended up. And wow. then ended up in San Diego, which is where I bought it from a guy. And okay. then it arrived in this country off the, the ship like two days before my wedding. I dragged okay. it to my wedding on a trailer because it didn't run. It had the oil pressure and it was just screwed. <laughs> so I, dra I dragged it on a trailer to my wedding day, put ribbons on it just for the hell of it. It wasn't even, it was just a static thing. And then, um, and then like two days after my wedding, got on a plane to the States and we, we our honeymoon in the state so we ended up going back to where my car was sort of from within days of it arriving in the uk but gotcha. um, 
Yeah. Purple, the, white. Car. Yeah. Yeah. And they, driving an American car over here is really cool. It's, it's, it's an awful lot of fun. It feels like an event. Right. People, people crowd around. And actually, I think probably because of certain modern films like things like Fire and Furious. Sure. A lot, of young, a lot of young people know what it is, which I was yeah. always thinking, is this going to end up being an old man's game where people just go, well, it's not a Skyline or a Supra, so I right. don't care. Mm-hmm. And actually, no, there's a pretty broad appreciation or, for Or golf tee, right? Yeah. Like, or exactly. Or a, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly and i think and i and i and, and i and i that that car is got is going to be a car for life for me because it drives even better than i thought it would and it's just in that kind of condition where there is there is quite a lot of patina on it but i had to restore some of it but we kind of did it in a disguised way where <laughs> it didn't look like it had been um uh restored so much and then i had to rest- completely rebuild the drivetrain but it is a number of matching cars so i decided to do that Yep. But um, it's just one of those cars that every time I drive it, it's so rewarding. Makes you happy, doesn't and it? It makes me really happy. And I just feel, it, I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but I just sort of pretend I'm in a different time when I drive sure. it. And I think that's one of the special things about old cars, isn't it? You, you can do that. I can escape. I don't have to be in 2020 or whatever year I'm in. I can be in an old era where I'm just driving along, got the quarter light open. I don't have a radio in it, or it it has got radio. It doesn't work, and I, I'm just listening to the, the engine, and yeah. and it stinks. It really stinks because it's got all the uh, like cavity wax in it for, uh, for rust proofing. <laughs> yeah. Whenever when I get it in the summer, you've got this heady smell of you know like rich petrol and this cavity wax. It makes my wife feel sick. She hates the smell, of it. but my then- daughter loves it. She goes, "Oh, I love the smell of." The- and there's like right. there's, so, gotta be, there's gotta be like a the sweet tinge of like rotting uh just adhesive you know from the headliner <laughs> and stuff right All, yeah you know, old, old mercedes have that have that that's thing. Right. yeah right like that <laughs> the hot vinyl yeah the yep. hot vinyl yeah uh, yeah there is there is a bit of that there's there is all these strange smells and of course you don't get those kinds of smells in in in, in cars the vinyl and the, yeah yeah pretty wax and the and the right. super or whatever it is but yeah it's it's a very very cool car and it's a lifer in fact my 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 it's one of, it's it's kind of one of my dream cars I, I feel lucky in that i've never i've never had a dream car that was so far away from it being attainable that i i'm never gonna get it i i love you know a lot of supercars a lot of really exotic things but i've never craved to actually own one and that you know there's a difference between driving one and looking at someone else's and actually wanting to live with it and i suppose right i'm lucky in that i do get to drive a lot of cars i could never afford to buy but um yeah the dodge is just super special and it's a manual so it feels nice you know it's going to ask it's an automatic yeah 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 it's i mean i was i wasn't looking for a manual i was just looking for a specific condition um with the for the money i had and it ended up being a 383 four speed 68 um with very few options no power steering no disc brakes no servo on the brakes either so it's a quite a physical car but that's but that's kind of like yeah and, and it's and it's pretty much original spec, but yeah that's very cool. so you mentioned um oh because of what you do for a living you know you get to drive other cars and that like brings us to mm. kind of like the brake show Right, that's that's the the new yeah. title for your YouTube channel, right? So, is right. that yeah? Is that a rebranded car pervert? Is that basically talk about how that came in, why the name <laughs> changed, and and everything else, and what people could kind of talk about what the show is and what we what we could to expect, and then tell people where they could find it, obviously. Okay, well that's good, my nice nice opportunity to plug my own material. That's very kind. I um. So I, 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 I started 2020 uh, over Christmas. I thought, what am I going to, uh, uh, shall I, shall I go at it alone with, with, with a, my own channel, with my own brand, as it were. And me and my wife said, yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, 2020 was the year of starting my own channel and taking it seriously and trying to build it up as a proper business, I suppose. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was going <laughs> to. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, little did I know, sort of come late February, early March, things would start kind of imploding. Someone pulled, someone pulled the the plug plug out. But um, despite the obvious uh, difficulties, it's been it's been really good. You know, I started off by just t- thinking I, I, I want to make sure I get the variety of cars right, the sort of cars and people, car people that I would want to feature, and really mash up the old with the new with the future and uh project cars and so uh that that's what that's what the the car pervert channel was and and i've always been sort of known i suppose uh as car as the car pervert informally so i just called the channel that but i i think as time got on let whenever it was about four and a half weeks ago that i changed from car pervert to the late break show and the reason for that was although the channel had been growing really well and and i've had some really good feedback i mean lots of you know engaged genuine people which is great i think with my sort of commercial head on you know certain businesses were a little bit uh suspicious of the title and um search engines can be a bit dismissive of the title <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's weird. Like, it's almost, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so odd. I don't understand that. I know it's just—it's such a shame. It's such a shame. So although it's kind of funny and we get it, and people know that I'm not an actual, you know, sex pest, it's fine. Um, I, 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 I think we just kind of went. All right. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna do this as as, as a proper business, which I'm trying to, let's call it something else. But at the same time, that I'll still introduce myself as the car pervert. But the actual umbrella title of the show is different. And the other thing about that is it hopefully means that it, as it keeps growing, we've got the opportunity to not just have me present it, maybe. You know, there'll be some other people. So I thought late break, we were trying to think of, you know what it was? I I, I, I looked at um, the, the, the old fashioned font and the logo of the Muppet Show. And I just yes. kept falling in love with it. Sure. I love the Muppet That's Show. Good. It's such a, it's yeah, it's so good. good. I mean, it's. Yeah. Muppet Show was like the Sim- oh, the, dude, the Muppet Show from the seventies and the eighties. Oh that was the pinnacle puppet tier. Johnny, you could have you could have gone one of two ways with that uh, graphic design direction. You could have gone Hee Haw, or you could have gone Muppet Show. Either one would have been a good choice. <laughs> but we're glad to hear you went Muppet Show. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'm going to do a little bit of it. It's going to be this strange sort of um, bastard child of the Muppet Show and. The sort of seventies sitcom uh, interview show, with a twist in the with the with the with the break being spelt differently, obviously for car breaks. And I thought, oh, all right, let's just try that. So, and that's what we've done. But it is just a name. At the end of the day, you know, most in fact, most really successful YouTube channels have got crap names, haven't they? So I don't know why I was fixated with the name, but um. So yeah, that that's that's what happened. So since uh, early February uh that's what i've been doing a video a week on that channel um and just trying to get that that appreciate that automotive appreciation that's quite broad and uh as you know you know I'm, on the one hand i've got old cars uh and v8s and things like that and on the other i've got quite a uh a pretty wide knowledge and appreciation for electric stuff and then there's a, a whole host in between so Right. And I suppose like my electric drag car, which we were talking about, I think probably before we started filming, um, that um, that that car was one of the, the seeds that got sown a few years back that made me think, actually, yeah, you know, I don't feel like this, the the, the car world has to be um, too sort of tribal and, uh, and the sort of bloods and crips thing. You know, I feel like some people think if you're into old V8s, you that's you have to just be into that and you're not allowed to venture across to here but actually that's one of the things that when i first met you mike i knew you had a bit of a a, a broader vision of, of this oh yeah this world this world that we're interested in and slightly obsessed with and um and and and, and that i think as i get a bit older i my, my appreciation probably broadens a bit cars which i maybe dismissed before i think actually you know what there's something there maybe i am i'm more into those than i thought i was and I think, I think that happens a lot. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people, I mean, they'll, they'll look at myself and they'll be like, you're just a muscle car guy, you're VA and everything else. But the, and everybody, they just assume they would never go out and purchase an electric car or a hybrid, which is the, if I had a commute every day and I needed something, yeah. I, that's the first thing I would go buy. 
Oh yeah. Right. Because it yeah. makes total, it really does. It makes total sense. And I think that we're, so Dan and I, we're both based in the San Francisco Bay area. So we are literally in the Mecca of electric cars. Oh yeah. Right. We oh, see yeah. them being tested on a daily basis. We see, if you go to like Sonoma, right? Like we were at Sonoma and like Lucid Technologies was running the Lucid Air on the drag strip. Like they're, oh, yeah. they're everywhere. So it's, it's kind of hard not to be hit in the face with them every single day. Um, yeah. But there, we know they're coming. We cannot avoid it. Right? It is where the future is. Yeah. So for us as, you know, from you, you, myself, Dan, as hot rodders and lovers of old stuff, it's like, okay, you, you relegate them to their place in society and history and you enjoy them for what they are, I think, right? But you have to move forward and you got to appreciate what's coming down the road. It's coming down the road. Yeah. And there's also this opportunity to kind of marry some of these things together as well. You know, there's putting electric stuff in other cars or it depends on the car, you know, because some people are very precious about some cars are really interesting because they're engine, right? Other cars are interesting because they look pretty or they the engineering was fascinating. So so how do you feel about uh, that? Because I, I have personally, I have a big problem with putting electric motors in certain older cars. Like, if somebody came in and said, you know, you need to put an electric motor in your charger, I'd probably punch their eye closed, right? Yeah, like no, not, I, I not don't do that. Right? No. So, do you Even though it's got that? a great appropriate name, but no. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> it's a charger. So it's great. Right. <laughs> right. That is, that is but great. I think, but it's, it's one of those things where people have said this to me. They, they've said, oh, because you're into that, does that mean you're going to take the V8 out and go electric with the charger i said well no that's precisely not what i'm going to do because that that charger with that engine in that state that i've got it in is is is, is a perfect tonic for all the other things that i do you know if i drive to work uh, mostly ev nine to five with you know kids to school all those sorts of sensible slash boring journeys then i've got my reward things in the garage for right. No. I've I've worked hard all month and I've saved money on fuel and I, yes I've, I've there's been less em, emissions which means I'm going to drive you know the six point three liter or the whatever it is and I think that's that's how I try and do it and I it doesn't it might not work for everybody but I think that's that's kind of a good way to do it because realistically I'm never going to drive that Dodge or any of those the old cars of mine every day because I could, a, I couldn't afford to and b they'd probably just dissolve in this country and fall to pieces so you know I, I, I actually love them and I, I want to look after them so it's 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 one of those things but you are right I see people converting stuff to electric that where you're like well hang on a minute like the party piece of that car is the engine so right. why would you take that out right that just seems so, a bit wrong. whereas some cars were born with shit engines weren't they right so, <laughs> yeah. Really the right matter yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So let, let's on your channel. Are you give us an idea of the content for those who don't know, might not have subscribed yet? What what type of stuff are you going to do? New car reviews, old car reviews, kind of just focusing on car culture as a whole. Like, where are you going with this? Well, um, so um, there's a, a a video every week, and to give you an example, say the last four weeks, the video that went out yesterday was the Ford Mac E 1400. They're sort of drift stunt, uh, kind of mad Jim Carner type electric car that Vaughan Gittin Jr. drives. So I, I met him and he took me out in the car, did some hot laps and had a good detailed walk around the car. Yeah, it was great. Um, the week before is a guy in the UK who um, is quite an accomplished drag racer and he's got a an Aston Martin, um, a pro, like a drag week style road, street, street legal. I mean, that thing's just, just bonkers. I've been trying to teach that for years. Yeah, it is. It's great. And he and we managed to arrange the insurance so that I could drive it on the road in probably the rainiest day of the year, which was great. Perfect for 2,800 horsepower. Um and so, so there was that. And then the week before that, well, I should remember, shouldn't I? Uh, the week before that, I mean, I, there's some straightforward reviews like the Audi e-tron, the, um, oh, I know, a guy that had built like a Ferrari 250 GTO recreation using modern Ferrari V12 and six-speed manual, but old shell. Um, and then there's, yeah, you know, there's... It's so you're doing as a whole. 
Yeah, and every sort of every five weeks, I'll try and do it every four weeks, but it's probably every five or six weeks. I I, I do I do a sit down chat show if you like. I take two really bad brown chairs that I've had for years. I put them in a trailer and I drive to somebody's house and we, we film a chat with them and I look around their garage or their sort of hoard of cars. And I've only done one so far, but the next one's coming out in a few weeks, um, which will be quite exciting. And they're, and they're usually either a car designer or someone who's quite prominent in the car world and has maybe a quite an eclectic mix of cars that is not your usual you know okay they've done well for themselves they've got a whole list of supercars and it's kind of fairly generic but and that and that's my kind of idle chat as I call it so that you're trying to get under the skin of a really hardcore car person um, and who you may know but if you don't know you should know because they're interesting for these reasons so yeah i mean that's the thing trying to get that kind of breadth of content and trying to produce it reasonably well i mean i'm not gonna not gonna lie mike um i've not earned much money this year no it's uh, listen (laughs) i've I've, I've, I've done a post of it into building uh this thing dude you're preaching uh, to to the choir yeah exactly hence hence the old down chairs right johnny Hence the old I mean, these chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. chairs are terrible. Chairman's chair. <laughs> I, 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 I bought them when I was a single man, um, a bachelor living in quite bad uh, rented houses, and I could never bring myself to get rid of them. My wife's finally drawn the line and last year and said, "Listen, we, we, they've really got to go. They're looking a bit shit." So uh, and they they are looking shit. So I put them in the shed at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> but I've thought, oh, I'll, I'll get them back out. What she meant is so, not uh, in the house, right? Just right, right. Not, house. not in the house. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not in the house. Right. It's like yeah, it's not a it's it's not okay to have them in the house anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> that they're, they're in the garden, and they're just these really bad sort of seventies easy chairs, I suppose you'd call them. Um, and they're gonna yeah, they're gonna do a really c- kind of pathetic tour with me uh, where I meet. Um, these people and 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 do this chat so yeah you've you've got a bit of that and and i've always had a real enthusiasm for and we've talked about this before as well about about sometimes the people behind the cars are actually more interesting than themselves and when you see an interesting selection of cars owned by one person you 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 just want to open their head and ask them why even if you don't like the cars it's sometimes the crazy combination that you just go, what? Really? You like that and that? That's just weird. And there's always a great story. Always. It's either nostalgia or, I don't know, someone in their family did this and did that, or I don't know, they won it, or I don't know, they're a race driver and they managed to write it into their contract that they got given whatever it was. So, yeah, there's some great stories there. And hopefully as time goes on and people, I prove to people that I'm not going to sort of um, ruin their integrity. Uh, I might get invited to <laughs> interview some some more interesting people <laughs> we'll we'll see we'll see so we're, we're coming up on uh close to an hour right now so let me ask you this. um where okay. can people give us the actual web address where people go where they could find you where can they find you give us instagram youtube okay where, so where I've, you, home address the, the yeah. home address yeah <laughs> The 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 web the web uh, the the YouTube channel is YouTube dot um, com forward slash the late break show break being spelt B R A K E and then um, on Instagram we also have uh, the late break show and my own Instagram is Johnny Car Pervert and then on Twitter I'm at Car Pervert and then late break show is at I think it's just late break show or the late break show so. You, and then there is a late break show new website which I almost forgot to mention despite the fact that I I stayed up for about a week straight trying to get that finished so that's on there as well gosh yeah um so have a look at that but yeah me, I mean mostly it's the YouTube channel, channel. Really. okay and can, are you coming out with any merchandise and stuff I'm, I'm saying this because I want people to go out and support good content you make good content people should buy stuff from you support we need it thicker we need a hat you yeah. know you can it's funny you should say that guys thank you for mentioning it i feel like that moment in wayne's world where they're like this just i just can't stand it when <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, and, and uh it's uh 
So you can buy car pervert merch because a few people were a bit upset that I'd stop calling the channel that. I said, well, listen, I'm still classed as the car pervert uh, informally. So you can buy car pervert um, coffee mugs and uh, stickers and caps and T-shirts and actually hoodies, I think, as of maybe the day before yesterday. Okay. So you, so you, can, you can order that through the website um, if you go to latebreakshow.com or uh, I think I've got .co as well. Uh, and the sh yeah, and in terms of the the channel, yeah, I've, I think I hit one hundred and sixty four thousand subs yesterday or the day before. And I've got You're a maniac. Uh, I, need, I need food. Look, I'm I'm an animal. Uh, I got a plaque from YouTube. This this is perhaps the only fun thing that's happened in twenty twenty to me. This this very small, slightly cheaply made uh, uh, Google YouTube, but it's it means a lot. It's what it signifies, getting a hundred thousand subs and um, in 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 very weird times. That's been great, you know. It's been really really good, and and hopefully, and and it's and it's great to get uh, emails and comments from people all over the world. And there's quite a few um, American viewers on the, the YouTube channel, so so thank you if you've watched Absolutely. my material before. You know, if you yeah. haven't, well, I can't force you. <laughs> yeah just do it not yet i can't, yeah. I can't. well that's I can't force here. yeah exactly right? our, our goal is to find and this is one thing that i do want to say to tell listeners out there right because a lot of, every now and then people want to be like well you're having these commercial people on whatever they get listen we have people on this podcast that make a contribution to the automotive world that either make great content that are designers engineers love vehicles yeah. so don't ever come at us and say you know <laughs> <laughs> this these people be on here or whatever the case is that that is incorrect if you want to be on this show do something great with automobiles and then dan and i call yeah. you and be like hey what's going on you right. on the barbecue that's right it's it's that yeah, easy. No. if you don't do anything we're not going to call you <laughs> it's, it's my wife it's my wife's favorite line when, when she's trying to home teach our children which has been happening a lot lately she says if you do nothing Nothing will happen. Yeah, that's right. Really. That's right. That's right. And and I, and I sit there and go, oh yeah, that's yeah. I hadn't thought of it like that. Wait, so totally are you true. are you saying staring at my at all the cars in my shop doesn't do anything? Just staring at them doesn't <laughs> thing. Is, that, is that what I'm trying to get from this conversation? I took an hour to get there, but man, we got there. Mind, <laughs> well, you know what? Mind you, I'm thinking if you stared at something long enough, you don't physically change, but you're in your Head, something might oh, change that's, that's true. That, right that that's could true. lead to something great. and now you're talking i remember i remember kanye west saying one profound thing once and it was um all good things start with ideas and i sat there and went oh wow. he's, he's a bit of a weird one is kanye and i yeah, said yeah, went, yeah. actually <laughs> actually there's something there it's something if you there. hadn't had the idea to do the thing that the thing happened that did the thing yeah. then <laughs> it's, it had to be an idea and it's usually when you're sat on the toilet or when you're staring at a broken car, or <laughs> when you're watching something really boring on Netflix that your wife probably prefers, but you're yeah. actually you're, you're secretly mm -hmm. on your your phone. Your phone, phone. Your phone. it's rescreening it. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. that. And so, actually, Kanye, you did actually talk to me that day. It was a long wow. time ago, and you weren't talking to me or on a radio show, which I was listening to. Wow. But it's just, yeah. well, it, well, then we we uh, obviously we'll, we'll throw a little shit to kanye you know because he needs it but right for you, yeah. Johnny, you know, thank you so much for coming on the bar with you man it's always a pleasure to talk to you i'm i you know everybody go watch the late break show check out Johnny's stuff i guarantee you will fall in love with it just as we have and uh thank johnny you. we'll be t we'll be talking soon i have a feeling we're probably going to be doing some stuff together in the future i mean johnny needs another youtube mirror on the wall you got to get him there so this gotta is get a, him there. Effort, a group mirror. effort <laughs> it's a group it's a group we need to get in there. It takes a village. That's right. People, it takes a village. I, it's very, it's very good of you guys to invite me on. It's been really good, and I'm, uh, and the stuff that you're making is, is, is quality, with, you know, genuine interest and integrity. And I think that's one thing that, that's important. It's like there's lots of people making content in general. The shortage of content is there, but it's, I think the stuff she has some substance is, is probably thinner on the ground. Yeah, and, uh, uh, right. I think yeah. you keep on, keep on, keep on, even when things are a bit poo. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah. I'm not. I, I'm going to mention Brexit because like that's just. Right.
nothing to do with me. No, no. It's nothing to do with me. I love that. Like, keep it on, keep it on when things are poo. Thank you for my yeah. Pen. Right? Like, that's yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, that's buddy. That's my out. That's my out. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy, thanks again, bud. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks.